Yo, YouTube, what's good? It's Agus. In today's video, I'm going to be covering a highly requested topic, which is a full-length user interface guide. Um, I'm the current number one player in Solo Shuffle overall um, at 34, 34 rating. Basically, the way I have my UI set up is I think it's you know a very compact, efficient uh, information. It has a lot of information. A lot of people might view having uh, as much information as I do um, as information overload. However, you can notice a theme or a kind of a pattern in a lot of high rated players user interfaces is that they have the information that you need to win games present. You don't want to not show information simply because you're afraid that it might create or that it might be too much information. Um, that's something I highly believe. And another thing is I want the uh, I want my UI to be very uh, central based. So you'll notice a theme in the UI that everything is based around the center of my screen from like here, imagine like a square from like here up in this little area here is where we want a majority of the uh, you know information that is gonna be seen throughout the game. So anyways, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so for the first add-on, uh, this isn't a completely necessary add-on. It's called Bartender. So the reason I'm using Bartender here is because uh, I like the look of it better than I like the actual action bars. I don't like a lot of room in between my abilities. I like uh, having like no spacing in between. Also, with Dragonflight, there was a lot of new abilities added. So the standard action bar is actually 12 by 3, uh, but I have mine set up here as 14 by 3. Uh, the reason being is that, and I get this question all the time, Aegis, why do you have two abilities of each uh, on your action bars? Basically, the reason is, the short answer is, I like the way it looks. I think it looks very clean. Uh, the second answer is, it does offer a little bit in terms of peripheral vision. So like when I am looking you know, here, and I want to glance down real quick to see if there's a cooldown, I now have like a wider vision, I guess, of each ability because there is multiple of them. So that's, I guess, kind of the functional answer. But the real answer is, and I don't think this is uh, mandatory by any means, you could play with one ability, you know, it, it's whatever. Like I said, it's personal preference for me. I like the way it looks. There is a little bit of a functionality used to it too with the, uh, the vision, like I said. But anyways, so basically the way I have Bartender set up here, you know, it, it does also offer a lot of like, you know, just kind of fun things like the Q status bar, you can move it. Basically, it's easier to bind here. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff like you can hide the bag bar, the micro menu, all that kind of stuff. But just to show you my settings here, this is kind of how I have it set up. 107 scale, 12 buttons, one row, hiding the macro text too, just to kind of make it a little bit cleaner as well, because I do have macros for a lot of my abilities. But I don't want it, it's it's basically not needed information. So that's kind of the theme of my UI is if it's not needed information, it's not there. For example, you can see here, this is actually one and two, uh, two being my Frostbolt, but you don't need to see Frostbolt on your bars, right? Like what is seeing Frostbolt gonna do? It doesn't have a cooldown. So basically you can use macros to hide that as well. So this says, you know, um, or actually, this, this macro is kind of confusing, but basically all you need to know is show tooltip, ice lance, cast frostbolt. It's going to show the tooltip of ice lance, but it actually casts frostbolt when pressed. So that's just like a philosophy, I guess, that I want to throw out there is that if you don't need the information on your screen, it's best to either show tooltip to a different spell or just, you know, put it on a hidden action bar. That's another thing I do with bartender. So you can see here, my bar six is the one that I keep as my hidden action bar. I have it in the visibility tab. You can uh, hit always hide. And you can see here, I have my gateway shard for how to take gateways with a key bind. Don't need that on my action bars because it's useless information. Uh, you can see arcane intellect. Don't need to see that. My uh, arena three counter spell, since I already have two. And we're going with the theme of two of everything on the bar. My mouse over focus macro. So whenever I mouse over, I can focus, you know, whatever. I really only use that in like arena or whatever, but anyways, uh, that's kind of all it there really is for bartender. I mean, like it's a pretty, 
it's a pretty standard add-on you know action bars this is also very personal keep that in mind personal preference if you guys like the edit mode action bars or you use dominoes or something that's completely fine as well i just kind of wanted to throw out a little bit of philosophies with that as well like uh just to recap the if stuff doesn't have a cooldown it doesn't really need to be on the bar uh and i like the idea of having two of every ability on my action bars so that's really going to cover the action bars um now let's move on i guess to the other add-on or another add-on rather which is called big debuffs and we'll i'll go over this one now okay so big debuffs let me actually fly to a a zone here with a target dummy so basically what big debuffs does let me pull up one of these custom so I can get a raid frame here. So these are, these are what's called your raid frames. Uh, whenever you're in a group, it's going to create party frames, but you can actually change them into raid frames. Um, it's going to give you this nice layout here. And what this is going to do, uh, big debuffs that is, is it's going to add a nice icon whenever something hits your teammate or yourself. So this is how I see what my healer is being put in cc uh in terms of cc so if my healer gets full blound that's <laughs> blinded blound this is where i'm gonna see it if he gets feared this is where i'm gonna see it if he gets counterspelled this is where i'm gonna see it this is how i keep track of where the big debuffs basically are being put on my team or myself now that being said big debuffs also has another component which is on the nameplates so you'll see here on the nameplates of the arena targets we'll say these are arena one two and three you'll see a big debuff on them so this is going to show a variety of different things it's basically going to have a priority list as to what it shows um let me turn off test mode here this is the nameplate uh, version so it's going to show crowd control immunities interrupts spell immunities defensives you know you guys are getting the point here it's going to show very important buffs so um and if you guys want to change the priority you can go in here and change it up I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, I'd just play with the default. But yeah, that's going to be big debuffs. Very, uh, very important add-on. I think this is a really, really crucial add-on for awareness. If you guys aren't playing with big debuffs, definitely download it. Uh, and if you guys do want all the exports for my exact settings will be in the description. So uh, yeah, make sure to look there if you're looking for the exports and whatnot for the exact settings that I, that I use. You don't have to use that, obviously, but they're there if you want it so now we'll go over the next add-on here actually i'll just go down the list and kind of tell you what some of the other add-ons that i use here are so right off the bat uh, we see advanced interface options this add-on uh achieves a couple of different things for for one you can turn off you know guild names as you can see here that's just like uh nothing really going on there right this is how i uh use or sorry, this is the add-on I use to maximize my camera distance. So a lot of people ask me how I zoom out so far. I basically play at the max camera distance. This is going to allow you, because I think the default is not quite 2.6. So you're going to need an add-on or to run a script to change your max camera distance. This is the add-on I use for that. In terms of other things, uh, this is about the only reason I use it. There are a couple things in here in terms of nameplates. So let me see here. This is how I turn off the enemy. Where is it here? For minor enemies. So this is how you turn off. Cause basically when you go in here, where is it? Interface, names, where's names? When you turn off minor here, this is gonna turn off a lot of other things that you don't basically wanna see. Um, However, it still leaves on a couple things that you don't want. When you turn it off in the advanced inter interface uh, add-on, so I'm kind of stumbling my words here because this is, whole thing is like kind of confusing, but you can turn off basically some other stuff is all, is all that it really comes down to. So I would just change it through here, um, but yeah, not too much going on with this add-on. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, better wardrobe, obviously you don't really care about that. Classic frames. Classic frames is how I get the old UI, per se. 
the old frames. Uh, you guys know how the, the new Dragonflight frames look. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of those, so I prefer to use the old ones. So classic, it's a, I don't, I don't call it Jack's classic frames here. I'll actually type it in the chat so you guys can see it. Um, but yeah. Classic numbers. Classic numbers is uh, a big one that I use. It's a very important add-on. Actually, it's not super important, but I like my game to look very clean. Um, and this is how I achieve my damage numbers. So you'll see here when I start bursting, you see how Blizzard and Orb, those pointless damage numbers aren't showing. Only the big crits, the actual meaningful damage numbers are showing. Not like the Blizzard ticks and the Orb ticks, which are doing, you know, pretty pointless levels of damage. Only the nice crits and uh, actual abilities are showing. So basically how we want to set that up. Classic numbers. So you're going to want to make sure it's enabled. You want to uh, hide the default combat text. I think this might be... I think all this stuff might automatically come like this. I think this might be the default. The only thing I change is the small hit filter. So you want to change the small hit filter to 10,000. The reason why this is, is because this is going to eliminate all the small numbers, like the orb and the blizzard, which are hitting for, you know, like uh, 7k, 3k, 9k, 4k, all these like kind of numbers that you don't really want to flood your screen, right? Like we'll see here if I actually change this to zero, how much flooded, how much more flooded it looks. See how there's just a million numbers there. You can't really even tell how much damage you're doing because as soon as you hit a big crit, it's being overlapped by the small numbers. So it's kind of like, I, basically, I don't like that. So this is how I combat that is by having these crit filters or these hit filters rather. So yeah, basically classic numbers. All right. Yeah, and just to go further down the list here, we have classic UI. So classic UI is something that it's an add-on many people use to restore the previous action bars that people use. However, I like the three stack. I don't really like the old UI. Um, the only part of the old UI I want is the frames, which we have from Jack's classic frames as we discussed previously. Uh, but what I use classic UI for is the mini map. Uh, Again, this is not a functional needed arena add-on. I'm just going over all of my add-ons that I currently have installed because it's a full length user interface guide. Basically, if you want your user interface to look like mine, this is the guide that's gonna tell you how to do that. Um, so we're using classic UI for this top uh, minimap over here. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I'm using that add-on for. Not a whole lot going on with that one. Okay, details. Details is a pretty important add-on for Arena. Basically, it's going to tell you how much damage you're dealing and how much damage is being dealt to you. So um, you can, you know, sort by games. You you think back, man, you know, that that game on Mugambala, like, what, what killed me there? Like, how did I die? But basically, you can go in here, go to deaths, and then you can just look at the death log and you can just see what's killing people uh you know what was someone's death log because you obviously could look at your own but when other people die uh you want to be able to look at their death log too like if your teammates die you can see how much healing is being done uh you can see how much damage is being done you can see the damage breakdown who's uh what sorry what abilities uh were being put onto what targets so maybe in solo shuffle you can look over here and be like, okay, well, I was on, you know, Trill and Arms JK was on Mez mainly or something, you know? So you can, there's just a lot of information present here. It's going to help you try to understand the game a little bit more after the fact. It allows you to reflect on the game a little bit and just have overall a bunch of information uh, as to what happened. So yeah, pretty, pretty nice add-on for that one. All right, so this next add-on is called Diminish. Basically, what Diminish is going to do is it's going to track friendly DRs on yourself and on your teammate. So you'll actually hear me a lot when I say this, when I fight sub rogues, when I fight windwalkers, when I fight anything. Basically, uh, now that we're playing, you know, it, this applies to any class is what I'm trying to say. Um, you want to be able to track your own DRs because that's how you know how you can play. For example, if you're on stun DR and you're fighting a rogue, that kind of means that you could play a little bit more aggressive in this period of time because you're on stun DR. So you can't really be punished for pushing in because they can't really kill you in the stun in like a full kidney. 
because you're still in DR. So having this information present to you um, is very crucial because you can see uh, once diminish, I'll t toggle test mode here. So this is where I track DRs for myself. You can see if I'm coming off Hodge DR in like three seconds, then I would know like, okay, I'm off Sun DR. I need to play back a little bit because I don't want to get kidneyed behind a pillar and just die. But it's also important to know when you're on that diminishing return. So you know, okay, I kind of can push in here. I actually can get a little bit aggressive in this state. Um, and then this, for some reason it's not showing, but you can see it also shows on my raid frames. You guys will have to, I think, set this up because I can't exactly share my profile for some reason. They don't allow it, but it's a really easy add-on to set up for yourself. It's, uh, these are pretty much the base settings. The only thing I have disabled or I guess enabled would be the better one. The only thing I have enabled is my player, my target for out in the world and the party. Yeah. Party. So player target party. That's really the only people that I'm tracking. So if I was tracking DRs on this guy, and again, this isn't for arena. This is for like when I'm dueling people, I want to be able to see their DRs. I don't look up here to see DRs uh, in arena. I would actually look at my arena frames, which we'll get into a little bit later. So anyways, that's going to do it for diminish. Okay, so this is kind of the big one um, that it's kind of the... A lot of people ask about this add-on basically we have gladius ex but we don't use this add-on alone because it says arena it's arena unit frames but we don't use it for that the only thing we're using gladius ex for is actually to track the cooldowns above another add-on that we use called s arena updated so i'll show you this now s arena we're going to test it i don't know why this is showing so i'm just going to slash reload to get that to go away i suppose Okay, there we go. So you'll see our S arena here. It um, It's a very just standard arena frame add-on, arena unit frame add-on. Uh, I will have my exports to this. There are no exports. You will have to download the Lua file and the add-on file. Um, there is a tutorial on how to do that. I will also include the description to that. It's also in my Discord. If you guys want to see that, that's where you'll find the files it's in the UI section. Uh, I will show you here briefly in the in the Discord here. So you'll see UI add-ons and macros right here. In here, we have the files that you're going to need. So we have a bunch of files in here. We have the Gladius X export, which you're going to download from here and here. And then we have the S Arena export, which is uh, you'll just download the folder from CurseForge, and then you'll install the Lua uh, from here. And if you guys do want a video tutorial setting that up, you also have that available to you as well. Um, so that's going to do that. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so basically S Arena, what it's doing, I'll just break it down for you. So this is going to track uh, trinkets. This is going to track DRs. This is going to track cast bars. And remember what I said about that centralized UI. So this is why I have my cast bars and my DRs set up this way. Because mainly you're looking in this little box of area uh, right here. This little this little space, this little square, this central centralized UI. So a lot of people have their cast bars set up like over here, like under the frames. But you're going to miss a lot of casts this way unless you have like hyper awareness. Uh, if you're really trying to improve in the game, you need to create a UI that's going to help you improve at the game. So if you're missing casts, something that you can do is take the cast bar and move it more central. That's how I ended up with this UI. I realized I was missing casts. I wasn't CSing stuff. There were casts being done that I wasn't aware of. So I was like, how can I make my UI to assist me in gaining this awareness? So I moved my cast bars to the middle of my screen or somewhere that it would be more centralized because that's kind of the idea behind this entire UI is everything kind of being centralized, like I said many times. So that's going to be S Arena. It's also going to show a lot of important buffs here. So if you get a full sheep, it will show here. If they have Incarn up, it will show here. Basically, it's like another big debuffs. It just shows you important buffs there as well. So that's part one of S Arena. Now we're going to get back into the other add-on that we were talking about that goes in conjunction with this. 
Gladius EX. So I'm not going to show you the export here because it's we had a million things turned off and a million things modified again you're gonna want to just get my export from this um but yeah so you'll see here this is what shows the cooldowns above s arena so the reason i like this and i'll explain this uh now we're gonna be using another add-on that we'll talk about later called omnibar which is gonna track our interrupts the enemy team interrupts a lot of people use omnibar to track enemy cooldowns However, there's a problem with that. When you use Omnibar to track everything, including interrupts, including cooldowns, as a caster, whenever you need to cast, you need to know immediately what interrupts are present. And when you have an Omnibar, like here, for example, test, this is what I use to track interrupts, a lot of people track these cooldowns here as well. But if there's a clutter of information there and you can't tell immediately what kicks are available, it's going to cause a lapse in judgment or it's not going to be efficient, basically. So I like to use Omnibar to track only interrupts because it's a lot cleaner. I know exactly what interrupts are present always without having to tell, basically, without having to put any thought into it, really. If I had a, you know, a million icons here tracking every cooldown, I wouldn't be able to just immediately look and know if there's a kick. I'd have to like look at all the abilities individually and be like, okay, uh, is there a kick? Uh, and that is the time you can't afford in Arena. So that's why I'm using Gladius EX to track the enemy cooldowns above the S Arena frame. It's also going to make, make it very nice um, in terms of sorting. For example, this will show the mages cooldowns. If the mage is here, it'll still show the mage's cooldowns here. If the mage was the third target, it would switch there. It's smart. It knows what it's doing. It's always going to show the right cooldowns. Um, highly, highly suggest getting these add-ons. Anyways, let's move on now. Okay, so for the next one here, we, we got health bar color. Again, really just cosmetic add-on. It's going to take this health bar. By default, this is going to be green. However, this can be kind of confusing because in Arena, if you're targeting three different people all the time, um, you want to know who you're targeting, basically. So you can kind of just eliminate a little bit of confusion by their health bar being the right class color. For example, this is you know, blue for mage. If I target this guy, it's darker blue for shaman. Maybe someone else over here. Brown for warrior. You guys get the point. Um, just a pretty nice add-on that I, I enjoy personally. Leatrix, just as it says here, quality of life add-on doesn't really do too much. This is how I get the gold chain uh, around my character here. You can see this gold chain. I just like the way it looks. I think it looks cool. I like to look good, play good uh, type scenario. So you can see not really doing anything else with this add-on. Um, I think this is how... Oh yeah, so this is how I get basically an arena, like in shuffle or whatever you'll see like up here it'll say time left how many people are left how many wins you have i don't like that being right here because i use above the nameplates as a little bit of extra place to put a couple different add-ons that i'll talk about later trophy gcd as you can see i track people's global cooldowns and i don't like the information that information being right here because i find it kind of interlaps overlaps with my buffs and my trophy so i move that over here and i use that with LTP, you can man manage the widget. You can see I, I moved it from here to here. Reset. Shit. Okay, we'll just leave it there. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think I use it for anything else. Class colored frames. Not sure what that is. If checked, class coloring will be used in the player frame, target frame, or focus frame. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, but maybe that's an overlap with health bar color. Not sure. Anyways. Not too much going on. Oh, yeah. So this is also how I disable my screen glow and my screen effects. So if I go invis here, you'll see it won't turn my screen that gross blurry color. So I like this more because I don't like my screen. I don't like uh, my vision being impaired, basically, uh, especially when you're playing like arcane and you mass invis and you need to like aim a ring of frost or something. I don't really like it. Uh, instead, it you know, you can put a tell me one in the middle of your screen, which is another add-on we'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, basically using that to disable the screen glow and the screen effects. 
not too much else going on with Leatrix. So let's get into the next add on here. Move it. So move it, I use for a couple different things. You don't have to use move it, by the way. You could use move anything, but that add on, that add on has broken my UI on multiple occasions. So I kind of tend to stay away from uh, move anything. It's made me have to get like a clean reinstall of WoW like twice now because it's permanently destroyed my UI. So just use that add on with care. You don't, you know, definitely keep in mind what you're changing. Don't go too crazy with that add on. I like move it because all I basically have to do is toggle frame stack. I can hover over any part of the UI here and it's going to tell me what that's called uh, with that highlighted. You see the, uh, the baby blue text that's going to be what is what it's called so you can see here this thing is called player frame so if i wanted to move player frame i could type player frame in here and i could move it so the reason why i use this add-on is i use it in conjunction with a couple other things so i use a weak aura and you guys probably know what weak auras are to show my arcane charges but then we need to remove the blizzard arcane charges as well so i use move it to hide this frame um I also use it on my other characters to hide the combo points or the essences or the totems or whatever. Um, basically, I just use it to hide all of the classes, I guess, energy bar or like not energy bar. But you guys get what I'm saying, like the the resource bar so that I can move it with a weak or into the middle of my screen. All I'm really using move it for. So, yeah, let's get on to the next one now. So, Omnibar is like i said we've talked about this add-on this is what i'm using mainly to track interrupts so i will have my uh import and export for this but basically you can see here when i press test it's going to show me kick uh reflex ground shear grip uh step kick cs mind freeze anything that's going to be an interrupt to you and i have this set up for mages right now so there's a lot of important stuff uh, interactions for mages in particular. So there are more things than interrupts. For example, there's step kick because Gladius EX isn't great at tracking step. Um, so I'm using this to track step kick. For example, DKs have grip, which they can also use to interrupt your cast. And then Gladius X isn't good at uh, really tracking that either because it has two charges. There is some other stuff too. Like you can, we can just go down the, the list here. We have, yeah, I mean, just disrupt for that class. We have dark sim. Uh, dark sim is something not a lot of dk's play but it is important to know when it's on you and omnibar is going to let you know that as soon as it's applied to you like i said we got the pet kick the kick the grip um for druids you know we got the solar beam the skull bash we got the interrupts and my omnibar actually has a lot of custom spells added because a lot of stuff has a modified cooldown so for mages for example this add-on hasn't been updated to like put a lot of the new abilities on there. So, you know, we, we've added death mark. We added all the uh, evoker abilities. We changed the dragon's breath cooldown to 45. Basically, this is going to be a makeshift updated version of Omnibar until they update it um, because it doesn't include all the spells. And if it does have the spells, it has the wrong cooldown on some of them. So this is going to have a nice up-to-date version of that. But yeah, anyways, let me move on to the next one here. Okay, so we'll talk about Omni CD. Omni CD is a really, really nice add-on. Omni CD is gonna show you the cooldown of a lot of your uh, major and major uh, offensive, defensive cooldowns, mobility options from your teammates. So you're not really using this for yourself. I don't have this enabled for myself. Like I said, a lot of it you're just tracking the icons for your teammates. So you know if you're full stunned and your healer's in a blind and you see him trinket or you know he has trinket or whatever you know that you can kind of sit that but you can also look at it and if you see he gets blinded and he has no trinket then you then you know that you have to live that go by yourself basically just being able to see your teammates cooldowns is going to help you in your decision making when you are deciding if you should trade what you should trade when you should trade it's going to help you to know when to play offensive because you see that your teammate has offensive cooldowns back you can call for stuff if you're playing coordinated threes for example if you 
have an arcane surge or whatever and you you're ready to pop and your priest has pi you can ask for it there's so many different things that you can do with omni cd like the information being there is just so crucial this is definitely an add-on that you guys need to get if you aren't using it this is how you make sure that you don't overlap with your teammates basically uh especially in a solo shuffle environment where you can't exactly um communicate with your teammates so i would definitely recommend this add-on and looking at it this does kind of go so you can see here i have it on the left side which is not in the center of my screen like i have other things the reason why this is is because it's not information that you need all the time it's only information you need when you are looking for it so for example if i'm taking a lot of damage I will look at my teammates cooldowns to see what we have. I don't need it to be like a snap thing that I see very quick, like a cast bar, like a sudden cast bar, you know, like if I had the cast bar is more over here, I wouldn't be able to see them, but I don't need to know. Like, this is just like a, like you want to check it every now and then, but you don't need it to be like a, it's not like a snap quick decision that you need directly in the middle all the time. So that's kind of why I have it on the left. Um, but yeah, Omni CD guys get the add-on it's really good let's move on to the next add-on all right um spec specific keybinds this is an add-on because i play all the different mage specs and you'll see here i need different add-ons because quite frankly they all have a different amount of binds they uh they just require me to have different keybinds so this is going to be a nice add-on for making sure that you can play all the different specs which is something that i recommend doing now is the easiest it's been to ever play all three mage packs they're all extremely similar so this is a nice quality of life add-on to make it to where you can have different keybinds for the other specs okay so here's another add-on spell notifications so basically what spell notifications is going to do is in the middle of your screen it's going to tell you what you spell stool what you um here, I'll just do this for example. It, it's going to move the, or sorry, not move. It's going to show you what you spell stole, what you interrupted in a nice text on your screen here. And you can see where I have mine located. I moved this with move it. It's called a uh, game tooltip, I believe. Or no, no, no. It's a uh, UI errors frame. You can see I repositioned it. Zero, negative 303 scale. I scaled it down a little bit. So I made it kind of more in the middle because i didn't want it to overlap with my frame and my buffs and whatnot so i made it right here because before i think the default location is like up here somewhere and it was like causing some overlap and i don't like anything to be overlapped so yeah this is going to be a very helpful add-on to see what you spell stole so you don't have to like you know press spell steal and then look at the buffs and see which one you got it'll just say like stole this and then also when you kick people, it will just say like interrupted holy. So you don't have to, it's just like an extra insurance. Like, okay, I interrupted holy. It's not like, okay, now I have to like look at my S arena or guess sometimes know if I got faked or whatever. But anyways, I think it's a handy add on for just the spell steal alone. But yeah, anyways, let's get on to the next one. All right. So now we're getting into what I would call the big ones. These are the big, big, we uh, add-ons that are going to help us a lot in our journey um, into becoming more aware in the arenas. So tell me when's and weak auras. Now I use both of these in conjunction because I'm really bad with using weak auras. Uh, I only want to use weak auras for the stuff that can't be done with tell me when. So tell me when is going to be this add-on here, TM dub, and it's going to be the add-on that I use to track buffs and debuffs on myself. Is my massive viz up? Did it get broken? Did my healer guardian me? Did he ray me? Uh, this is for my other classes. What are my arcane tempo stacks? How many charges of ice flows do I have up? Do I have precog? Am I about to get silenced? Do I have curse of tongues on me? Do I have mind games on me? Do I have chrono loop on me? Essence break, sky reach. Am I thought stolen? Do I have a hypothermia proc? My warrior intervenes me. So that's what I'm using these middle, what I call middle auras. You'll see the group here, middle auras tracker or middle aura trackers. So these are all 
interactions that I would like to know at all times. So I'm keeping these in the middle because stuff in the middle of your screen, like I said, we have a very centralized UI. If it's in the middle, that is information that you're going to pick up 0.1 instantly, pretty much. And these are all really important things to know. So I've been adding and removing stuff for this, uh, from this for, you know, over a year now, probably. Uh, I like the way I have it set up currently. It's been working out great for me. Uh, and then I use these trackers down here for personal mage buffs. So these are like more like what's happening in the arena, I guess, uh, you know, what cooldown is being used on you. Guardian, Sack, PS, Ironbark, Earthen, Time Dilation, Revival, Disperse. And then these are for more of like your personal buffs. Is my palm up or my, um, my nether precision or how many icicles do I have? my harmony sacks, my flame cannon sacks, my arcane surge, my uh, combustion, my icy veins. It's going to just tell you how long you have on those. So you can see I make some of them actually glow. Uh, so you can see when I spec into like flaming cylinder, for example, on fire. I have a nice tell me one that's going to tell me whenever I have my tinder, my tinder proc up. Well, it used to be called tinder anyways. Uh, and then you can see here if I pop like combustion or something, my combustion is all glowy and shows me how long I have left on my combustion um, when I spec frost as we wait for uh, yay I'm in combat as I spec frost you'll see like it's gonna show me my icy veins cooldown or my duration uh, how many icicles I have as well you can see here it's building on my icicle stacks this is how i'm using tell me when to basically just track my own auras like i said um but yeah pretty useful add-on you can see it tracks my proc and my trinket proc it tracks a bunch of different stuff i've added a million different things i've been customizing this for a very long time now i really like my current setup if you guys do want my current setup like i said i will have the export for this uh, i will show you briefly now on how to import and export this because it's kind of confusing so you're going to get the code that I get for, uh, for you guys. So I'm just going to go over here as if I'm you guys. My tell me when export augers. Base bin, you click on this. It's going to bring you here. I guess tell me when export. You hit copy. Go over here now. You're going to paste it into this little box here. This small box. You're going to hit import from string. And then you're going to pick the one you want. So the middle aura trackers is going to be this middle section here. And then this one is going to be auras one. Um, so, and if you do want the other stuff I have, uh, you can do that. This is a party one and two cast bar for your teammates. I personally don't use this anymore. Um, the klepto tracker is going to uh, let you know when you play arcane, it's going to put a nice big klepto cooldown next to the buffs. Um, let's see what other one we got here. S arena dispel tracker. So the only thing that s arena lacks is actually a dispel it doesn't show the dispel so i do this through making my own tell me when for it and i just conveniently put it at the end of s arena as you guys can see here so it's going to track the enemy sealer uh, the enemy healers dispel rather um so you can see we're using tell me when for a lot of different things here from string boom and that's about it or is two i'm not even sure oh that's the extra little bit of room up here got it um but yeah, anyways, that's how you do it. You want to go here, let's say Auras 1, you would copy this and you would create a global group. Um, you could do a profile group too. This would make it to where it only does it on that one character. However, I like all my add-ons to be universal. That's why you can see in my add-ons, it includes, or in my tell me ones, it includes my other classes that I play as well. So it includes my hunter, you know, my rogue, my priest, my moonkin. So it's going to show all these things for my other classes as well in the same style that I like it on my mage. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's tell me one. Now let's go over weak auras. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, now basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over the weak auras. So weak auras... Um, is basically tell me wins except it has the ability to do a lot more complex things and I am really bad at making my own weak auras so tell me when for me is more manageable I can make my own I can 
you know, do this and that. And because all I need is a very basic aura. I just wanted to show a buff on me. I don't want to have to like make a weak aura for that. So I'm leaving weak auras for the complicated stuff. The complicated stuff being the buff counter, the freezing rain tracker, which shows a nice little, you know, buff here and then goes on cooldown whenever the the blizzard's on cooldown. You can't do that kind of stuff with Tell Me When. So that's like why I said I'm using uh, weak auras for that. So let me drop comment here. So I'll just go over briefly now what, what weak auras I have. So obviously we have the freezing rain tracker, which I just showed you. Um, all the exports for this are going to be in my Discord as well. So if we go over to my Discord and we look here, we see all of my weak auras, pretty much all of them. So you can get them from there. So now we will look here at buff counter. This is going to show how many buffs I have. You can see my arcane intellect. I press barrier. It's going to give me two. I blink. It's My temporal velocity is going to show me three. When I alter, I have three. I alter back. I still have three because I got another temporal velocity. Like, it's basically how many buffs you have. This is going to be kind of helpful information for when you press alter time. Um, you can see I obviously have it as a very small number here. It's just because it's the way I've always done it. So mage barriers, you can see here, 85k. It's going to show you how much absorb you have left on your barrier. The reason why this is important is, let's say, for example, right now, I have an, a barrier for 84k still, but barriers off cooldown. So you might accidentally press barrier here, but you don't want to do that because you still have 85k absorb left. So this week, week or is going to be really helpful for not overlapping absorb. You want to wait for the barrier to get hit. You go down to like 1k and then it breaks and then now that you see no number there you know it's broken use another one pvp queue just tells me how long i'm in queue nothing too important there this one is really important so um basically what this is doing let's imagine this is a enemy name health bar so this is a arena enemy right here bavek this is his health uh his nameplate rather okay so what this is going to do is remember we have big debuffs showing stuff on the right. I'll just go ahead and sh toggle that real quick. So imagine this is a enemy or whatever. Shows what auras they have active on the right. What we're using this weak aura for, we'll go ahead and just put his nameplate here. So remember we got the big debuffs over here. And then this is going to show their globals. Every single global they use, it's going to show their abilities that they use in real time. The reason why this is important is because you can time certain abilities. Like, let's take one example, I suppose. Uh, let's say you're a mage trying to sheep a priest. If you see, for example, that I'm casting sheep and the priest is on global cooldown here, I know I don't have to fake this sheep because he's on global. He can't press Shadow Word Death. So I'm just going to be able to kind of use that information similar to that in a lot of different scenarios. Um, for example, the other day on my rogue, I really wanted to cloak a paladin's hodge. So I he you know I saw he was on global. He pressed holy shock as soon as that global ended, as soon as it ticked, you know, like like this. That's when I cloaked at the very end of his global, um, and then I cloaked the hodge. So you can just time a lot of stuff this way. It's going to be very helpful. You can also sometimes catch. Uh, people popping you know offensives and defensives through this as well but yeah that's going to be a very very nice week aura okay the next one is the nameplate totems so i don't think i can show you this here but basically uh this is a really nice week aura for uh just separating totems it's gonna change the color of the health bar of certain totems for example uh where is grounding grounding totem will have a purple nameplate so it's going to make it stand out more it's also going to show the icon above it so this is a great great totem weak aura that you're going to need i've went through and i've got rid of a couple things i don't think you really need to see mind bender you don't need to see wind fury totem uh, you don't need to see a lot of these things so i turned them off uh, for some of them and i've kept the others uh like grounding uh, spirit link the ones that you need to kind of click on and kill as soon as you can asap so that's that. Now we'll get on to the Alter Time Week Aura. So as you guys can see here, this Week Aura is crazy. 
Um, it shows how long you have left on your altar and it shows what percentage you altered at. And it will also show green if when you alter back, that means it'll be a positive alter, a net positive, or it will show red if you're gonna lose health from altering back. So let's say you alter at 100%, and then you get hit with a giant chaos bolt for 140k, and you wanna alter back, then you know that that will be a very net positive alter. But let's say the opposite happens. You're at 50% health, you press alter time. Then your healer heals you to full. Then it will show a red number there instead, and it'll be like, hey, you know, if you alter back, you'll go back to 50%, not 100. So it's very, very nice weak aura to know whether or not you should alter back or whether you should cancel it. Um, I use a cancel alter macro right here. Just a simple cancel aura. I have it on just a separate bind here. So um, alt A is how I cancel my alter. So I would just alter. And then if I saw it was going to be negative, I would just cancel it. All right, so the next week aura is, we got some, uh, some more here. I think this is the last one that I use for mage. And this is, well, actually, this isn't even for mage, this is for everybody. So this is, as you guys know, Mez weak aura CDs. However, Mez's weak auras kind of track a little bit too much for me. I don't need to know all that information. If you guys are new to the game, I would recommend using mez's version uh you could just google literally just google mez weak aura and I, I think it should come up like mez weak aura yeah mez dragonflight arena cooldowns so if you want his version that's going to include way more stuff for me that is I, I don't need to know all that um these are what i have compiled as the most important stuff uh nullifying shroud when people are drinking, who has Chrono Loop, True Shot Aura, Double Tap, Death Mark. Actually, Double Tap's not in the game anymore. Beast Giraffe, Siphon, Feral Frenzy. And I've also turned off all the noises. I don't really like the noises that pop up. Mez's weak auras make too much noise. I don't really like all that kind of stuff. So mine is, I would say, a more compiled version. Uh, I would recommend, like I said, if you're a newer player, to use his version. Because it's going to do more for you. Um, but please please make sure that it looks clean don't keep it on like the the group scale is like don't blast it up to like a million and have it huge like i said the way i have all my add-ons laid out there is no overlap you can see here even uh the friendly nameplate thing is not going to overlap with this so even if i'm spell stealing and someone's drinking at the same time it no, nothing's going to overlap with each other so just keep in mind and then you also might be thinking well it's going to overlap with your Tell me when here, but only like one or two of these ever show at a time. So it's never going to go down this far. So you want the top one to be where you want it to uh, display. So we have no overlap there. And that's going to do it for the weak ores. Um, I don't, let me see what other add on we got here. Trophy GCD, like I said, Trophy GCD is what you're going to use to track enemy cooldowns this is kind of like a log so like we have the nameplate tracker with the weak aura this is going to tell us what gcds are using in real time but then trophy gcd is going to be kind of like it's going to keep a log of people's uh cooldown or uh globals that they're using so you can see here i have my focus one going off to the side here and my target one going over here and you can see like the past four globals so i like that that's why i use that add-on and I think that is actually all the add-ons that we have. Uh, that is basically how I have my UI set up, guys. I mean, that's that's the video. That's the video. If you guys have any questions or if you think I left something out or whatever, please do let me know in the comments. I really hope this video helps you. I hope in a more grand scheme, not even just like the giving of the files or the add-ons or whatever, but I hope this kind of helped you guys think about what you should think about when you're making your own ui if you don't want to just carbon copy mine or whatever so anyways that's all i really have i really really hope you guys enjoyed the video and peace out